It was a close call for our next guest, the Perry family, who were on site at the time. Pleased to say, Magnus, Dominique, along with their beautiful kids, Lucas and Oliver, join us now. <sighs> Lucky. Scary. What was it like? Oh, there was blood everywhere, kids missing. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, went no in, was... we went in with three kids. Came back. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, um... <laughs> Take us back um, to yesterday morning, probably this time yesterday morning, and, and what happened? Um, so I actually woke up about four in the morning. Uh, Lucas woke up and he woke me up, and he, uh, we, he, we heard the lions roaring. And Lucas said, I, I, I'm scared, what's going on? And I said, it's just the, the animals, you know, yeah. they're night animals. I uh, didn't think much about that. We went back to sleep, um, woke up again about six, quarter past six, and um, around about 20 to seven, I think it was, the alarm came on and uh, the zoo keepers came running down screaming, code one, code one, you gotta get out of Did your tent. Did you tents. know what a code one was? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we, <laughs> and Tommy got out of the tent without her shoes on, so sort of barefoot. Run. She went out there ahead of you to see if everything was all right because you didn't want to leave the, you didn't want to leave the tent. Yeah, yeah I said, go and check it out. <laughs> <laughs> she went barefoot with a torch. <laughs> That's Australia. And then what happened? Um, so we, we got to, they told us to run up to this little bathroom area, um, shower area, and uh, they locked us in. They counted yeah. everyone and made sure that everyone was in there. And uh, they said, this is probably just a drill. Yeah. Nothing to worry about. Um, well, they were both, so basically they were lying to you at that point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as kids, what was it like for you? Um, it was a little bit scary. Yeah. And, and you heard the lines, did you? What did they sound like? Roar. Yeah. Because <laughs> you, were, you were hoping to snore, but you just heard the roar, right? Yeah. Uh, and, um, and then what happened after? Did you see the lions, or what did they say happened? Um... They put them back in the um, enclosure. Yeah, they're just naughty lions, huh? Um, you're obviously the bravest woman in, in the world, um, yeah. the mother of your own lion cubs. Um, how would you sum up the experience? Uh, a bit of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you comfortable with the explanations and everything, and did you feel uh, safe? Yeah, they were very professional, and yeah. they knew what they were doing, obviously, yeah. And, and when they said to you that um, it was an integrity issue, um, what did you take that to mean? We didn't hear that message. Yeah. That wasn't given to us. That was after it was with the PR boffins we, for three they hours. Went, they <laughs> thought it was a drill, and they said... We do drills at this time of the morning because the zoo's not open, yeah. so it's easier to do it when it's not busy. Yeah. And we might get people with um, onesies in zebra suits coming past <laughs> pretending to be animals on the loose. So I was hoping to see someone in a onesie. <laughs> And um, after about half an hour in lockdown, we realised, oh, this is the real thing. Do you have a, a, a zebra onesie? Uh, that's a bit private. <laughs> <laughs> that's a yes. Uh, how would you sum up the experience? Um, Jurassic Park. Yeah. No, it was, it was a good experience. I mean, uh, I've grew up in Sweden and um, everyone in Sweden is terrified of spiders and snakes in Australia. Yeah. This just adds to it and <laughs> makes it more exciting. You'd be because... about the most interesting Swede I've ever met. <laughs> like, I bet you don't drive a Volvo. Uh, I don't, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I've got him in one. Thank you, guys. I'm glad it all uh, turned out all right. Will you go back? Yeah. 100%. Good yeah. on you. Well, it was a story none of us could quite believe, and this morning the great lion escape is at the centre of a fresh review as zookeepers try to stop this from ever happening again. Today, Sydney reporter Gabrielle Boyle joins us from Taronga Zoo this morning with a safari outfit on. Um, Gabby, good morning to you. Story of the year. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely is, Carl. I can confirm this morning that the five furry offenders have spent some time in solitary confinement. A bit of time out, perhaps, to think about their bad behaviour. This story reads like the plot of a children's book. Unbelievable, isn't it? It was early yesterday morning that zoo management cottoned on to the fact that five lions, one adult and four cubs, had broken free of their enclosure. You can imagine the frantic response. Not only were zookeepers running around like crazy trying to find these lions, but also police were called in to make sure the area was secure. It's worth noting that the zoo wasn't open to the general public, but there were plenty of members of the public inside doing 
what's called Roar and Snore. It's an experience where you can stay in the zoo overnight. Imagine that experience being told there's a few lions on the loose. You're really going to get an up-close and personal <laughs> experience this morning. Anyway, it wasn't long before they managed to track down these lions. In fact, four of them wandered back into the enclosure themselves. The fifth had to be tranquilised and was brought back into the enclosure. Let's hear from zoo management. They did breach the containment fence. We don't have the exact details of how and why that occurred. We have received video footage and we confirmed that it was less than 10 minutes between the lions exiting their main exhibit and the full emergency response being enacted. Carl, the zoo has confirmed it was an integrity issue and a full investigation is underway. I love this story. It's the great lion escape oh. of 2022, they're calling it up. How would you guys have handled that in the country, David? <laughs> Mate, I reckon I would have been safe because I would have been faster than the last person getting into that room. So I would have been going straight for it, mate. No one would have beaten me to that door. I'll give you six to four on that. <laughs> I tell you what, they're lucky in Mossman. Uh, it's a pretty exclusive suburb. It's lucky they didn't end up being a coat by midday. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where are we Jimmy, going with this? Jimmy, I love, I love how they say. I love how yeah. they say in the statement yesterday, Taronga, there was an integrity issue. Yeah. What's that mean? Well, there's a hole in the fence. <laughs> The animals don't have any integrity. The lions don't anymore. There's an integrity issue. Do you issue. know why? Because they're too woke. <laughs> Someone left the gate open. You know, fair income. Anyway, imagine being tapped on the tent if you're having that experience of, <laughs> by the way, there's five <laughs> lions on the run. I'm with David. I'd be like Usain Bolt. Mate, I would have been so quick out of that joint. No, you want to immerse yourself in yeah. that stuff. Anyway, the integrity issue. The hole in the fence. Can someone shut the gate? <laughs> I think it's something like that. <laughs> well, it's probably the most shocking news we've ever reported on this program. The great Aussie smoker, I'm sad to say, is dead this morning. It is. Look, the truth isn't quite that dramatic, but it is true that more and more Aussie tradies are ditching their smoko break. And for more, we're joined by Nine Business reporter Chris Collar in Melbourne. Chris, good morning to you. This is alarming. What's Come going on. on? Yeah, Carl, Amelia, good morning to you. It is certainly alarming. I mean, Smoko is sacred. It's a time-honoured tradition in certain parts of the workforce. And, look, you're right, it's not dead, but it certainly seems to be dying out. We've got some numbers from High Pages which show that four out of ten Australian tradies are now down to one small break per day to eat their lunch. So those smaller breaks, they're disappearing. And it's not like they're working fewer hours. We've got almost half of the tradie workforce now working more than nine hours a day. So it is those smaller, the ten-minute breaks, you know, between 9am and... 11am and then again in the afternoon. That's the stuff that seems to be dying out here as tradies are just incredibly busy right now. Well, the thing is though, I mean they do work incredibly hard. They're, they're on, on site early, um, so if you start early at 5.30, oh, you know about 8.30 you want to have a little oak um, you know, iced yeah. coffee and a sausage roll. I'll duck yeah. for one, don't exactly. you? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's a God-given right. <laughs> It should be. I mean, look, in, in, on big construction sites, it's mandated. You know, you can't get around it. You have to put your tools down and have a break. But unfortunately, it's the smaller sites, the more, you know, residential mm. stuff that seems to be happening. And the reason for this is that people are just absolutely flat out. The tradies have more work than they know what mm. to do with right now. There's been a boom in construction, particularly in renovations. Uh, and right now, there's also a, a labour force shortage. Now, you can see here, this is how many loans have gone out to do renovations. And you can see that it hit a record high. It's come off a little bit now, but all of that work at that record high is still being done and there's mm. just not enough people in the workforce to do it. And so all of these small business owners, they're having to work extra hard and so these extra breaks mm. are now disappearing, which is a real shame. That's fascinating. Good news at least that there's plenty of work for them. Yeah, exactly. For the next couple of years probably. <laughs>